resolution 1 to 19 will get traditionally uh, up to 99% of the votes. 99% uh, uh, will vote with management, North Korean, as I always call it. But then 20 and 21, that's where it will get interesting. There we will see if shareholders, if investors accept Shell's current strategy, which is not Paris aligned, or our call for a Paris aligned strategy. Mark, I was, we had a good chat with um, Ben Van Burden, uh, and I think he's got a very difficult job because he came in to do one thing and then very quickly he realised, and the industry realised, it had to do another thing, i.e. not just grow oil and gas revenues, but also conduct the transition as well. Now, we spoke to Ben when he unveiled the energy transition strategy as well, and it did seem that they were going a long way, but also very aware of the fact that a lot of oil and gas product is going to be needed in the short to medium term, whether it's in the energy sector, whether it's in agriculture, whether it's in petrochemicals as well, we're still going to need a lot of this product and we're going to need the revenue from this product to pay for the transition as well. You're very aware of that, despite the fact that you disagree with the path to growth, don't you? Yeah, I'm very aware of that. And of course, the oil industry should make as much profit as possible from oil and gas in the next decade and invest these profits in the energy transition, so invest it in renewables. And that's the only thing we're asking uh, for Shell. We don't ask them to stop uh, uh, selling oil and gas tomorrow, but we ask them to start today with uh, the energy transition. And what Shell is promising now is a great promise for 2050. In 2015, Shell will uh, be net zero, uh, but the next 10 years, they will go far too slow. Uh, in the next 10 years, we the world will decide if we will meet the Paris Climate Agreement or not. And at the moment, uh, the, the entire oil industry who can make or break the Paris Climate Agreement is on the path of breaking uh, the Paris Climate Agreement. They need to cut emissions by at least 25% and preferably 45% to be on a 1.5 degrees pathway by 2030, not by 2050. Um, Mark, I think um, w when you look at um, uh, proposals like yours, often the only chance you have to get them through is for some of the major shareholders to get aboard as well. The fund management companies, the pension funds, the, the institutional investors. Give us a line on uh, how you think they're doing on their own commitments and whether you're going to get the support you need. One by one, the investors realize that climate change is such a big threat to all their billions, that if climate change gets out of hand, if we don't meet the Paris Climate Agreement, all their investments are at risk. And therefore, one by one, they're asking the oil industry to change. But that takes time. It's, what we do is not usual. Uh, investors are used to do engagement, behind closed doors discussions. We make it very public. We make very visible what investors want. Um, and in the past, we've proven that only a growing minority is enough to compel Shell to make new promises. In 2017, our second resolution, Shell wanted to do nothing about renewables. And then, because just because 6% voted for our resolution, they made the industry-leading promise to cut all their emissions uh, by the end of 2017. So that's thanks to a minority of progressive shareholders who fully realize how uh, their, all their assets are at risk. And in terms of the support you perceive from financial institutions uh, and the uh, role that they have in providing funding to businesses like Shell, uh, do you think they're on board at this stage? They're getting on board. So in the Netherlands, now eight out of the 10 biggest investors uh, support our resolution and basically are telling Shell uh, okay, it's nice you have this uh, promise for 2050, but we need you to act now. So that's a very important signal that the local uh, big institutions, the big pension funds, tell Shell, the most powerful country, uh, company in this country, you really have to change. It's not good enough. Um, so they have a lot of influence. And, that, and let's face the facts, these are the only people uh, the CEOs of the old majors have to listen to. They're not going to change on their own accord. They need to push they need to support and, uh, if needed, uh, force of the shareholders to change course.